Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be finishing off a little series on uh, measuring performance and calculating performance for aircraft and we're going to be taking a look at landing distance. Uh, after this of course we're going to be looking at fuel planning as well as uh, some advanced navigation as well. So let's check it out. So uh, first things first, uh, we have two different flavors of uh, landing distance charts. Of course, uh, like I said, there's the airliner style, but that would probably be a totally different series of videos. Basically, what airliners do is they have a standard distance, and they modify it based on conditions. And as long as you're under the standard distance, you're considered okay. It's a little different when you're down in general aviation land. So this one I actually got out of a Cessna 172 SP POH. I was actually able to locate one of these. So this is actually slightly more accurate to what we have over in Flight Simulator. We also have the old school style. This is for a Piper 28180. And uh, we're going to take a look at both. Let's get started. So first things first, uh, we're going to be interested in pressure altitude, as I've said about 10,000 times so far. We're dealing with pressure altitude, pressure altitude, that is not uh, indicated altitude, that is not density altitude, it is pressure altitude. So make sure you get this correct. So the way this works is super duper simple. Uh, we're going to assume that we're at maximum gross weight here. We simply find the outside air temperature and we compare it against pressure altitude. For example, if I were in the Rocky Mountains and I was landing at something that was 4,000 feet, and let's say that I did it during a nice, really, really warm day, let's say it's about 30 degrees Celsius, all I would do is I take these two values and I basically take an intersection and this would be the interested information I have. So in this case, my ground roll after touching the ground would be 725 feet in my total distance over a 50 foot obstacle. This again, if you want to imagine takeoff in reverse, this would be how far it takes after you get a 50 foot obstacle. Again, if you want to visualize that, here's a runway, here's a 50 foot obstacle. We're doing one of these. So the distance here all the way to when you actually stop the airplane, that's the total feet to clear a 50 foot obstacle. The distance between when you touch and you stop the airplane is your ground roll. So in this particular case, this would be 725 feet. This total distance would be 1,500. 75 feet. As usual, uh, whenever you have a situation where there is some sort of headwind, again, a 10 knot wind is going to reduce this by, I believe it's 5%. So kind of keep that in mind as well. So this would be significantly different. But again, these folks usually assume zero wind here. So as you have a stronger headwind, obviously this number is going to be shorter, but be very, very cautious. Just because it says we can land at 725 feet doesn't mean you, the pilot, can land. Another thing you want to watch out for too is this is at 61 knots indicated, which means this has actually been calibrated for pressure altitude. So this is a pretty decent chart. It's a good way to get quick estimates. Obviously, if you're sea level and it's a nice cold day, it does not take much room to stop the plane. Obviously, if you're at high altitude and it's a really, really hot day, it takes a very significant amount of distance to stop the plane. So you want to keep that in mind. Obviously, if it's wet ground, if you're landing on grass, you want to add usually 50% to everything. So you want to be very cautious with that as well. Let's go take a look at the other version, which is going to be your graphical version. Now, this is a little different. Um, folks of you who have seen the rest of these videos are kind of familiar with how these work. Basically, you insert all your data and then and you got call lines across. So let's go ahead and take a look at our previous example. Again, while well, we'll assume we're at uh, 6,000 feet here, and we'll also assume that the outside air temperature is, what do we say, 30 degrees in the Celsius scale. So we'll go ahead and get 30. Oh, that's going to put us off the chart here. Yee. So um, we're going to assume it's a little bit colder than that. Let's assume it's zero degrees on the Celsius chart. So I'm going to go ahead and bring a line straight vertical like that. We're going to hit our 6,000 foot point here. I'm going to bring this straight over to the right. And now you're going to go ahead and mark what your current weight is. Now, if we burnt, let's say, 200 pounds of fuel off of gross, we would know we'd be about 2350. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that here. Go ahead and hold give myself a nice straight line. And now what we do is we follow the slope of the line until we hit the next line we've created, in which case it's going to be at this point here. Now we want to create a new line and go straight across from here until we hit the wind line. Now what we're going to do is dial in our current wind here and then read off our distance over on this side. So again, let's say, let's imagine our current wind is, let's say we have a five knot wind. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and drag it straight up like that. And now we're going to follow the slope just like we did before and then go straight across just like we did before. So you can see under these conditions, this aircraft will require 1,400 feet over the obstacle. Remember, that's the distance from when you cross the 50 foot obstacle to the aircraft comes to a complete stop. So it's important that you keep that in mind. Notice their expected approach speed here is 66 knots and they're expecting you to use 40 degrees of flaps and they're expecting you to use maximum braking. So again, if you use any of those things incorrectly, these distances will be significantly further. Remember, you always want to add 50% of the distance whenever you're landing on grass. Now notice these folks do not give you a ground roll factor, but if you probably came over here, you'll notice, let's do some quick division here, 1415 divided by 625, whoop, you'll notice, whoa, 
1415 divided by 625. There we go. You'll notice that the ground roll is about two and a quarter times less than the total over 50 foot obstacle. So I usually say a roll of thumb is about half. So in this case, if our landing distance over a barrier was 1400 feet, I would expect our ground roll to be about 700 feet. So that's basically all there is to calculating performance. Uh, now that you know how to predict how much uh, fuel the aircraft is going to go, how much uh, gas you're going to be using, and all those other elements, it's going to be time to start thinking about the entire flight in terms of fuel as well as time. We'll take a look at that next time. Enjoy.